Last night, 12 hours before scheduled timing, my notifications advised me that I had to do a scale check for the middle shelf of my blooming alley. Hence, my middle shelf on the blooming alley is in a bit of a shambles. But just as well, because, oh my goodness, thank goodness for the notification. I can tell you there was quite a bit of activity. Most of them were crawlers, but some of them had already matured to adult size. Nothing that my trusted garlic alcohol cannot deal with. I am not concerned, except for the marks they leave behind and some of the pitting, etc. Anyway, having pulled these orchids from where they are located on the shelf, they're, it's a little bit cumbersome to get at them, to show them to you. Now that they're on the staging area, I figured let's have a look at them. They're doing pretty well, with the exception of one. Why not start out with that one? So thank you very much for being here. I appreciate that you clicked on this video. It's a beautiful day in Southern Spain. I cannot lie, I cannot lie. Frustrating orchids or not, I am not going to let it get to me. Um, this is Diacatlia chantilly lace, twinkle. I know, all of you orchid aficionados, you are well aware that this orchid should not look like this, especially not after five years. Well, <laughs> the fact that she's still in the collection, I don't know if that testament to my care or the fact the orchid keeps trying and I keep trying to help. But she is poorly, she has always been poorly. Last year was the best that I ever saw her develop, but you can see how the pseudobulbs are wrinkled back here. That means, of course, We've got issues with the root system again in the pot, which should not happen. So why am I soaking her? Well, I'm hoping that there are some live roots in there, some that are still functioning and it's getting a back to fill soak. <laughs> I mean, we are trying to get some new roots right there. They're branching and it's just pathetic. It's like we're going a step back with this one. And you can see that the new growth that it's pushed this year, it's nowhere near what it was before. So while in 2022, I was starting to feel very hopeful about this orchid. Yeah, this is giving me pause. Anywho, we've got root growth. It's like Groundhog Day with this orchid. I am almost 100% sure she's got underlying issues. She's got all the hallmarks and susness about her that she has the F-bomb in her. Anyway, she's still in the collection. And that is the worst of it out of the way. Now let's move on to the good stuff. I bought this orchid as Catlia bicolor brasiliensis. She came all the way from South Africa and she has adapted beautifully to Lekka and self-watering and she has just grown, trying to mature herself, moi, trying to help. So this one was from 2022. The root system in there is fantastic. Now, because of my high humidity this summer, I didn't think I was going to get any root tips to have issues. Hello. I'm going to have to miss that before I put her back on the shelf just to make sure that root tip keeps growing. Every root is precious, even though she's not a stingy root grower. But you see, one is trying to be a little bit cheeky and was like, yeah, let me see what's going on over here. Well, <laughs> not much. Get back into the pot, I say. Anywho, look at this. Madam decided to become a bifoliate <laughs> with her next new growth which started very late winter, not even quite spring yet, and it has become this beautiful thing, a bifoliate. That's why I'm hoping it is in actual fact a bicolor. One cannot be sure until she blooms. Needless to say, she is growing well, and of course, all these orchids I'm showing have already been washed down with just some plain RO water leaves cleaned and then misted. They glam camped on the staging area here overnight, and if I discover anything as I talk to you about them and update you, then they're gonna have a little bit of a touch up again. But so far, I'm not seeing anything. In your face, the piece de resistance, this growth. That is a first that she's starting on another new growth before the season has even ended. Hey, <laughs> if these are the developments, we shall accept them and just go excite. <laughs> this is my very poorly Brassavola cordata, but she won't be poorly for much longer. Well, 
in orchid terms much longer. She's giving me the opportunity to change her media. She's going to be moved out of Lekker and into Lava Rock because the evaporative cooling during my winters is not conducive with warm to hot growing orchids like this one is. And then having the root system <laughs> be a little bit on the frosty side. There is a new root growing here, so a repot is imminent so that she can recover because she was once a very beautiful orchid and this winter of 22 and 23 she lost all her needles including the most recent one esto no es bueno so woohoo i get to change her media and while she might look patetico well i'm still excited because it's the right time of year to do it and the roots are coming now that makes me happy Another orchid with a gorgeous root that seems to think the grass is greener on the other side over yonder is my Cattleya lobata. Very happy to say that she's still with me, even though that she came from that dubious shipment. But she has matured a beautiful growth right here. And the next eye is also starting to swell. I have never had her grow in succession new growths. So if I see any bodies, I'm just trying to brush them lightly and see if they are perished in actual fact perished <laughs> i'm using that word not to sound as though i am linguistically superior but just so that youtube doesn't ding me for words in the algorithm that it would deem threatening or inappropriate so i'm just checking to see if any of the bodies here are indeed perished and yes they are they're brushing off nicely so catlia lobata doing fabulously still very much i wouldn't say a seedling anymore but she's a juvenile she has as yet to bloom for us i would so appreciate it if you would give this video a like and if you haven't subscribed to my channel know that this is a fraction of my collection i have approximately 300 plus orchids that are all scattered around the patio and also some are still in the growth space because as my orchids are growing, pots are getting larger, it appears that my patio is shrinking. <laughs> but we like that. We like to get orchids to grow nice and big, which I'm hoping that these will do. But if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. It is greatly appreciated and a like would help out for the algorithm to know that this video is worth of being recommended. So. This is my Cattleya Moon Bells. She is an OG seedling in my collection back in the day when I also purchased quite a few flasks from the same company, all the Cattleya flasks. And well, they didn't make it. So the ones that weren't deflasked by moi here, yours truly, they are still with me, even though it would appear that not much progress has happened. However, I would say this is pretty good going. I've got these harsh winters that they now have to contend with and it kind of sets them back every time so when the temperatures rise they're not quite sure can we or can't we grow is it okay to do something now before we get knocked down a notch again anyway long story short my Cattleya Moonbells has grown a beautiful new growth and all the scale that I just saw even though she got the five star treatment yesterday there's always something that I want to make 100% sure is not around anymore. You know how it is with young, weak orchids. It's like scale are like a heat-seeking missile and they just really zero in on them. So I don't want to stop the positive momentum of this one. I have no idea when we shall be seeing blooms on this orchid. I'm thinking at the rate that she's going, being super slow, uh, probably in 2027, maybe. That's why it's best to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> you never know with orchids. No, but it would really be awesome if you would support the channel with your vote of confidence. All right, Catlia Velotina. I'm very happy to report that despite the roots up here looking gnarly and nasty, she's growing well and I'm expecting some new roots to come soon. And this is the growth of 2023. She has gone from a unifoliant to two times bifoliate with a sheath back to a unifoliate. So she's still at a little bit of state of confusion. <laughs> Eventually she will sort herself out. Now she's not a big orchid, but she has the most cutest, very different looking blooms. And obviously I can't post the blooms because it hasn't bloomed for us yet, but She's still around, stingy on the root growth. But as long as the roots are alive, I don't care if you only grow two per growth. Just make sure that you keep doing that year in, year out. Then our friendship shall continue. 
Here is either a seedling or a juvenile. I cannot quite say which because I have a much, much larger Cattleya dawiana, which hasn't bloomed for us either, but she's growing well as well. Can't deny that. She had some scale, got the five-star treatment as well. This is her growth of 2023, still pending a new root system. And these are the little leaves from the back, which probably weren't that little, but they were cut off because the orchid came to me with very heavy nitrogen deficiency. Now, the curling of the leaves is because of my cold winters, but you see the black lines here? That is nitrogen deficiency, and the nursery she came from just thought, well, we're not gonna show how bad the situation is, we're just gonna cut the leaves. So this is not a reference to how big she was when she arrived. I don't really have a comparison because everything here now is grown by moi. And in true Dawiana fashion, she grows a growth per year nicely. No complaints. Just make sure that the scale don't get to her, which they did, unfortunately. Oh well, she's alive. And then Cattleya tenuis. This was a species I've been longing to have in my collection and I have her. I've never actually said this is a species I really want to see bloom, so maybe I should add that now. I really want to see this one bloom because <laughs> also a very unique Cattleya bloom as such and she's growing new roots. Now, I could be tempted to repot her. However, I did take the inner pot out of the mask and gave it a little bit of a squeeze. Oh, we've got plenty of room in that pot. Plenty of oxygen exchange going on. I do not have to repot at all, but I just love seeing that. Any species Cattleya that is finicky on the root growth front, and some of them really, really are. They just are oh, so stingy. And then you see a root tip growing and you're like, Hola! <laughs> Excite! So, seems like my humidity is not as high today, so we just missed the surface a little bit, just to make sure that if it touches a lecker bead, it doesn't immediately get the moisture sucked out of it. Anywho, here we have, I was about to put the paintbrush in my mouth and talk to you, how rude. Okay, so here we have the growth of 2023. We have a smidge even if it's a smidge, but we have a smidge more size. And she's looking gorgeous, don't you agree? Look at them glossy leaves. Look at them glossy leaves. Yeah, I love that. I haven't washed the other leaves down because by what I could see yesterday, there was no scale on her, so all I did was a little bit of a misting. Don't want to jiggle them around when they're growing roots. I want to be very careful, but you see, no root and a single root so even though she's been in this pot quite some years plenty of space still there really really pleased that she is managing to deal with what is being thrown at her while i love me big poofy floofy cattleya blooms i do enjoy the massive lips and everything like that i have to say i also have a little affinity for cattleya blooms that aren't so usual in their appearance I like the little bit of the strange, the weird, the exotic. You know, the ones where you say, ooh, look, that's different, without going too crazy, of course, because sometimes these orchids require very, very specific conditions. And if you don't have a controlled grow space, like I do not have a controlled grow space, then it's a little more difficult to get them to grow. But we have the Bellotina and the Tenuis doing very, very well. And this is just the last of the gaggle. The rest are already on their shelf. And I shall keep the separation with their compadres at a minimum. However, I do want to say thank you so, so much for having a little perusing of foliage with me. <laughs> Be that as it may, orchid foliage, right? Okay. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much for watching. Know that it is that kind of support that goes a long, long way. So have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.